Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be sharing a few of my top tips for painting whiskers and fine details in acrylics. So first off we'll start with the brushes. Now here I'm using a liner brush, they're also called a rigger brush and as you can see here they've got a significantly longer bristle to the brush. When you compare them to a round they're a similar shape at the end but the bristles are much longer. This is going to enable the bristles to hold more of that paint and then allow you to create those longer finer lines. Now the consistency of the paint and how much water you've added is key to using these brushes successfully. If you're finding that the paint is not flowing off that brush and it almost creates start and stop points, that is a good indication that you don't have enough water in your mixture. Have a little bit more there just to get it slightly thinner and then you'll find that the brush stroke is far easier to create. Now on the opposite end, if you've got your mixture too thin, your lines will be very translucent. So you'll be able to see those base layers showing through that, which of course is not what we want for whiskers. We do want them to be nice and opaque. Once you've got that fine line between water and paint to get the right consistency, it does become second nature. And then as you're confident with that, it's just something that you don't really think about. Once you've got the correct mixture, it's then really about how you use that brush. And for this, there's two main things to think about. One is the amount of pressure that you're putting on the brush and two is where to hold it on the brush itself. Now, as you can see here, I am putting very minimal pressure on the brush. The bristles aren't bending hardly at all when it's in contact with the surface. The more pressure you put on this brush, the more of the bend in the bristles you will get and the thicker the line you will create. If you're finding that when using this brush that your lines are significantly thicker than you would like, it's a good indication that you're putting too much pressure on that brush. It is just enough to glide over the surface of the canvas. The other important element is where to hold the brush. Now most of the time here I have been holding it fairly close to the bristles. That's going to enable me to get more control out of that brush, especially when I'm painting my shorter lines. If I'm trying to paint more of a looser type of line and slightly longer, I'm going to be holding it ever so slightly further away from the bristles. Now this is going to be a little bit more down to personal preference and the artist themselves but certainly experiment with that but for the shorter lines I would definitely recommend holding it closer to the bristles and always rest in your other hand or rest in something else under your hand that you're painting with so that you can really stabilize that brush movement. Now one quick tip that I'm currently working on here at the moment is how to erase a whisker if you don't like it. Now this is a prime example where if you do anything, it doesn't have to be a whisker, you can erase it as long as the paint is still wet and whatever is underneath it is completely dry. So as you can see here, I wanted this whisker to still taper off at the end, but I wanted it to look like it was behind the tree trunk on this side. So I had to make sure that I really eased off on the pressure at the right point to get that. Now it doesn't matter if it's taken me three or four attempts because as you can see here it's completely erased. You're not even knowing that it's taken a couple of attempts to get this whisker right. But this is one of the main things that I love working with acrylics. As long as you do make sure that the layer underneath is completely dry, you can then erase that layer as long as it is still wet or slightly tacky. All you have to do is use a clean, damp brush with just a little bit of water on and that will completely erase that brush mark. And the whiskers, they really do add so much to any painting, so I want to make sure that I've got them right. As soon as I got that whisker in, I felt far more comfortable with how this overall painting was looking. Just one whisker out of place, especially if it's particularly long or overlapping an element where it shouldn't be, that can really draw the viewer's eye to that. So it is one of those elements that I want to make sure that I've got right. So a big tip when using a liner brush is don't allow that paint to get all the way up to where the bristles attach onto the brush. You'll notice that when I do use these liner brushes, at the absolute maximum, the paint is only three quarters of the way up the bristles. That is really important because as soon as that paint gets to where they attach onto the brush and that paint dries, it will start to make this brush split into two. As soon as it does that, it's very hard, sometimes near on impossible, to get those brushes back to how they originally are meant to look. And usually you do have to replace them. So providing that you don't allow that paint to get up to the end of where the bristles attach onto that brush. I've had these liner brushes last many years. 
And another thing to consider as well is depending on the animal that you're painting, the whiskers are going to vary between black whiskers and white whiskers. So really do study that reference photo and if you notice that there are a couple of darker whiskers, make sure to add those in. Especially for pet portraits because it's these kinds of little details that are unique to that animal. So the whiskers here on the eyebrows are shorter than the ones along the cheeks and the mouth area. So I want to make sure that my brush is only in contact with that surface for the set amount of time for the length of line that I'm trying to create. Obviously the longer your brush is in contact with that canvas, the longer your line is going to be. You also want to ease into the pressure and ease off on the pressure so that you create that nice tapered in and then tapered out look that the whiskers naturally have. Something else that can be really beneficial is to turn your canvas around so that you can always drag that brush down towards you when you're creating whiskers or any longer lines. Usually this is going to help to create a much more natural movement with your hand. Now the only reason why I don't like doing that is because I'm recording all of these for my slower tutorials on Patreon which this is available over there if you would like to paint along and the reference photo and liner are also provided. My Patreon is in the description below as well. So that is the only reason why I don't like to turn my canvases around just so that I don't distort any of the angles for the view in there. But that can be really beneficial as I say because it will help you to get a little bit more of a better angle with that brush. If you would like to see the time lapse version of this red panda, the entire painting with voiceover, I do have a version of that here on YouTube which I will link in the description below. So here is a photo of my finished red panda and as you can see there are quite a lot of longer lines that went into this painting and particularly very fine lines and I would always recommend to get some watercolour paper and just experiment with that and your liner brushes to try and get a feel for using the brush before you put it onto your canvas. I do find that when we're painting on canvases we, we don't realise it but we subconsciously put a lot more pressure on ourselves to get it right because we're working on a more expensive surface. So I would recommend for practising watercolour paper would work perfectly fine. That will really enable you to get a good feel for the brush, how much water and paint you need to get that consistency and then just keep on repeating the same movement until you've really mastered that long fine line. So I really hope the tips and techniques here that I've shared are useful. If they were, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube at the weekend. And as always, thank you so much for watching.